The plane to Seychelles is a very small plane. It's two seats on each side, but it's so small that I could touch the person on the other side. Um, it's the Arab couple in seat one, Nigerian couple, Nigerian couple, Nigerian couple, Nigerian couple, me, Nigerian couple, Nigerian couple, white couple at the very back, and I want you to remember that. So it's only about eight rows. After the two hours we land, we have to go through like a temperature scanner, which is customary during COVID, and then we get up to immigration. This is where I realize that I should have left Seychelles. So Arab couple gets up first. They're in and out in five minutes. We land at 2.30 p.m. I get up, I have a young girl, Nigerian couple, Nigerian couple, and then the line of people behind me are, are still waiting. There's only about four of the immigration desks open. I'm prepared because I'm not new to flying. I'm not, this is not a new experience for me. This being, I believe, country 50 for me, I, I was ready. I printed out the QRC code. I printed out my COVID test. I printed out my COVID um, vaccination. I had my passport. And I still printed out the hotel receipts. I hand everything to her. She goes straight to the hotel receipts and puts the first one on the top. She pulls out what looks like a burner phone for a drug dealer, a little Nokia and dials the number on the receipt, which is confusing to me because I book all of my hotels through Hotels.com. So the number on the receipt is gonna take you to Hotels.com. I use Hotels.com because after the ninth time, you get the 10th night free, and I'm using that free night for where I'm staying in Mahe, which is the Hilton North Home. It's very expensive, but I got the night for free through Hotels.com. She's dialing and she's speaking in French, so I don't understand what she's saying. And then she hangs up. She goes to the next page, calls, an up, calls the second hotel, which I'm staying at on La Digue, which is Le Domaine. Calls them, hangs up. The third hotel I'm staying at is Raffles on Pralin. She calls them and hangs up. By this time, Arab couple has left, and now all the Nigerians are standing up here. I see the supervisor walk up, and by the time she's standing there calling people, white couple is here. So I'm confused, because how have we gotten through eight people and I'm still here? I see the supervisor and I say, excuse me. As I say excuse me to him, they're telling the white couple, welcome to Seychelles. I am confused. I've been up here now for 30 minutes. I go to the supervisor, excuse me, can you explain what's going on? He turns to me. Let's stay tuned for part three. Before you scroll past this video, remember there are other parts of this video and it gets intense with time. So stay tuned for that part. Allow me to take this short break and then I'll take you back to her story. For context sake, this video is from 2022, 2023, and her experience is from 2022 December. And remember that was around the COVID time, so COVID was still a big thing then. And also, why am I posting this video? I'm posting this video because I've come across other stories of African women and African American women narrating their experiences about seashells and I couldn't get the best narrated story like she gave us so I ignored the other stories but they are also really deep stories and uh, those are the most recent for example one was from July this year and I could go through the comments and I found this one it's saying that Nigerians and Kenyans, they are known for drug trafficking and that's why they are not really welcomed there. And for context, again, I heard that Nigeria was banned from Seychelles and uh, they were not allowed to go there. So I don't know if that's still a thing because they were banned in 2023. No offense to my Nigerian brothers and sisters, that is that reputation that we built outside there. And you know, it's a small group that did that. So it's affecting the whole of us. And I feel like we shouldn't be treated like that. I mean, all of us shouldn't be treated like that just because of a small group that did something wrong. So let me know what you think about Nigeria being banned from Seychelles. And also, let me know if you think Kenya also is known for drug trafficking because I'm a Kenyan and I've never had such a story. 
I've never had that. So let me know in the comments and also please tell us if you would travel to Seychelles because for me I had it in my list of 30 under 30. I wanted to really go there but I don't know if I still want to go there right now after watching these videos and again I'm tempted to go there as a black woman so that I can see how that experience would be so don't forget to subscribe if you're new here kindly help me get to a thousand subscribers and also don't forget to like this video and comment let me know your opinions and what you think so let's enjoy these videos and then we'll come back to our discussion good afternoon same skin dress different location i am doing the story time from accra ghana so you may hear some noise in the background because my hotel is on the main road but one of the biggest questions and the most frequent questions i get after i visited 53 countries on this planet is what country would i never go back to and hands down it's seychelles seychelles is an independent island off of the coast of the horn of africa right next to madagascar and it has to be hands down on my worst travel experience for some reason I'm only allowed to do three minutes so this will be multiple parts but I'm gonna give you the story time of how Seychelles scammed me and held me hostage during Christmas 2021 so 2021 we were still at the height of COVID so a lot of countries to visit had a lot of contract tracing or a lot of visa things to do before you could get into the country so for Seychelles you had to upload your hotel receipts so that they knew where you would be for contract tracing which makes sense because Seychelles is a bunch of little islands there's Mahe which is the main island there's Ladigue which is a small island and there's Praslin which is the expensive island so for the week what I had decided to do was I would do two days in each two days on Mahe two days on Ladigue two days on Praslin if you ever see the Claire kayak videos that's on Ladigue and we'll get into the clear kayak and the lack of hospitality in all of Seychelles as the story time goes on so I did everything that was needed to be done. I uploaded all of my hotel receipts onto the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Tour Tourism's website to get a QRC code that they would scan at immigration. So I was flying Ethiopian Airlines, Toronto to Addis Ababa, Addis Ababa to Seychelles. I believe it's like a two hour flight between Addis Ababa, Ethiopia and Seychelles. Very quick. I was in Seychelles December 18th. To, I was supposed to stay there until Christmas night or Boxing Day morning, which is December 26th, and then go to Mauritius. But the day that I was traveling, Mauritius, which is part of France, closed down due to COVID. So I was like, all right, perfect. I'll go back to Toronto on the 26th because I already had tickets to spend New Year's Eve in Accra, Ghana, which is where I am at now. So my flight from Toronto takes off two hours late. So by the time I got to Addis Ababa, they had somebody waiting for me at the plane because I had to run to the plane to Seychelles. I noticed on the plane, it's a lot of Nigerians that were coming from a wedding. So I think the bridal party was there and they were doing like a honeymoon there. There was a Arab couple and a white couple and then just me. Stay tuned for part two. The white couple hasn't given the immigration officer anything but their passport. The white woman has like a folder cut short chest and she's reaching in looking for the same documents I gave. And the lady's like, no, don't worry. Welcome to Seychelles. So the supervisor standing there and I said, can I ask you something? He said, yes. I said, what is the holdup exactly? I said, because I've given all of the necessary documents. I've uploaded all the necessary documents. I have the QRC code to prove that I have the necessary documents. Some people don't have to give them. Why am I still here almost 40 minutes later? He, first words out of his mouth, this is not a race thing. Now, I don't know if it's your guilty conscience, but I didn't say nothing about race, but since you've opened up the can, let's talk about it. Why are all of the Nigerians still here? And the white couple and the arrow couple have hop skipped and jumped out of here. He said, if you're going to ask questions, I'm, I'm going to take you to secondary. And I'm still going to have the questions when we get back from secondary. I, I don't know if you've been to Seychelles Airport, but I can see the entire thing from here. Seychelles is a tiny island. Secondary is just a metal table that they probably got from the morgue and a fat security guard. I, I'm not afraid of that. If you want to deport me, let me know. Emirates flies out of Seychelles 
6 p.m. every day, I'll spend Christmas in Dubai. Let me know. If you don't want me here, it's not by force. I'll, I'll leave. He said, oh, so you're going to keep talking? You're going to keep talking? Yes. He goes, well, well, they're having problems verifying that you paid. Do you know what a receipt is, sir? Receipt means received payment. A person issuing a receipt means that they have received payment. And that receipt is proof that payment was received. So I don't know if you've never used a credit card before, but if I have a receipt for the hotel, that means that I have paid for the hotel. Oh, so you're going to keep talking? Yes. Let's take your stuff. Hey, we walk five steps to the table that is called secondary. And at this time, I'm doing baby blue in Seychelles because I have a whole photo shoot planned in the glass kayak. I, I, I put these themes together thoughtfully. And Zara had the most beautiful train case, like a cosmetic case, hard side, and a hard luggage. I've been looking for a hard side cosmetic case that fit on top of the rollerboard luggage for years. The security picks it up and slams it on the table, the zipper breaks. Now, if you've never seen a crazy Nigerian today, you're gonna meet her. Because you, you picked the right one on the wrong day. Stay tuned for part four. I take my passport and go to the awaiting taxi. I pull up to Hilton at almost 5 p.m. I landed at 2.30. She sees my passport and she's like, Miss Cupid, we have been waiting for you. What took so long? I said, the airport claims that they called you and you told them I didn't pay for my room. She goes, no. The woman from immigration called and asked if you had checked in. Seychelles Airport is hiring people that have never been in a hotel before. How could I check in if I'm in the airport? Hmm? I can't check in until I get to the hotel. She's going back and forth, calling all three of my hotels, asking if I've checked in. How could I have checked in? The rest of the week goes without problems, except for trying to book my glass kayak in Ladig. The people who own that company do not answer their phones. They don't answer their messages. I'm going back and forth with them. And they wanted 400 euros because they charge in euros in Seychelles. 400 euros for a 40 minute glass kayak photo shoot highway friggin robbery now between the islands there is a ferry company called catco so i did a lot of research because i'm good on yachts i'm good on cruise ships but them little fast ferries i get motion sickness so i got motion sickness pills and they said to sit at the top which is the business class of the ferry it costs a little more but you get an assigned seat and the boat is easier there so i had hilton north home drop me off at the ferry so i could take it to the next island to do my glass kayak this is where i realized that the hospitality does not exist in seychelles and i don't spend my money to be spoken to rudely i get to the ferry there's a line for business there's a line for regular of course i go to the business line because that is my ticket I go I have the broken hard side luggage cosmetic case that I now have to carry so I give him the small one he sees the hard side he was like if that's luggage it has to come I said the zipper if you can't see it flapped the fuck open is broken so it, it broke at the airport there's nothing I can do you cannot go on the on the ferry with um luggage Mind you, I want you to understand the size of this train case is like, it's, it's like the size of a briefcase. I said, so what would you want me to do, please? Hmm? Because it's broken. Would you, what would you like me to do with it, please? He just rolls his eyes and gives me my ticket. Get me the fuck up this country, please. Stay tuned for the final part, part six. The final island I visit in Seychelles is Pralin. I stayed at the Raffles. Seychelles, which is absolutely gorgeous. If you're familiar with the Raffles line, it screams luxury. Now, the problem is with that luxury comes cost. It's a thousand dollars a night. So I said, I'm only going to stay Christmas Eve and Christmas night. 
be out on Boxing Day, December 26th. But I wanted a luxurious Christmas. As you can see, I'm bougie. I like a little bougie vacation. Beautiful place. Now, to get back into Canada, I need a PCR test. And because Seychelles is small, they have to mail the test or fly the test to the main island because I'm on Prowling, which is the farthest island from the main island. So I have to take this test Christmas morning so that I can have the results by Boxing Day so I can make my flight, which was at 6 p.m. on my favorite Emirates. Get up to meet the nurse. She's sitting out in the open with a picnic table. No mask, no gloves, and all of the tests from the day are in a Ziploc bag. I'm like, this is not really sanitary. I sit down and she just kind of flicks my nostril. And I've had some very invasive tests. Costa Rica, they damn near gave me a brand new aneurysm. So I go to Christmas dinner, take my little videos. I'm packed and ready to leave. I get an email from the Ministry of Tourism who I emailed about the incident in the airport telling me that my test is positive. Now, I am fully vaccinated at this time. I've been wearing a mask everywhere. I'm actually confused. So I said, nah, I gotta, I, I gotta retest. Uh, there's no way I'm positive because I've been, I haven't been around anyone. Every room I've had, every interaction I've had, like I've had my own room in my own villa. So I tell them to retest me. They come back Boxing Day morning stating that I have to move my flight to the 27th because it's gonna take another 24 hours. I'm positive again. They're like, okay, so we can't let you leave the resort. You have to stay here for 10 days and pay $1,000 a day. I respond back to the Ministry of Tourism, the same people I sent about the incident in the hotel. Like, I want an independent test because the nurse, she not nursing like I expect a nurse to nurse. They send an email to Raffles. Raffles calls me and is like, well, if you don't want to pay, we have like an old um, abandoned hospital you can stay in um, that has no television, it has no internet, and you'll have to stay there for 10 days. Am I a hostage? Is this retaliation because of the incident in the airport? Why is the Ministry of Tourism and the Ministry of Health sending stuff to the hotel and in the, and Co correspondences I'm having with them straight to the hotel. This is wild. They made me stay the 10 days. My dad was ready to fly from Nigeria to come rescue me. A lot of people will say that this woman was being loud, this woman was being entitled, this woman had ego, and that's why she was treated the way she was treated. Because I've seen people in the comments say that. But the thing is, her experience was really traumatizing. And if you are in her situation, you wouldn't take any, you know, you wouldn't want anyone to treat you like that. Being stood up in a queue while other people are passing, that's first something that is really annoying. Secondly, they exploited her. They really did. And she was actually calm with all the experiences she went through with the COVID life and she actually didn't have COVID. That's the farthest they went with that. So, would you really want to go to Seychelles as a black person? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to comment that.